Okay guys, so about a month ago, I purchased 6 adult discoid roaches, 3 females, 3 males, along with 10 assorted size nymphs. I lucked out with this retailer, all of my roaches were alive, and as more than just mealworms and superworms. This is their unboxing, and as you can see, I do not have many roaches at all. By the end of the video, you will see how much my colony has grown, and will have learned how to house, care for, and set up conditions for them to breed. If you live in a state like I do, where dubia roaches are illegal, the discoid species is likely your next best alternative, as they are very similar in nutrition and care. Now on to the enclosure. I'm using a weather sealing sterilite container that I got from Walmart for around $15. It has four locks on top for a very tight fit, along with a rubber weather gasket to help create an airtight seal. To deal with this seal, we are going to be removing a portion of the lid and replacing it with screen. I do it with a hot gun, you can find them at most hardware stores, and it allows me to cut through the plastic fairly easy, and I use a knife afterwards to cut off the melted pieces. After that, I take a piece piece of screen, cut it to size, hot glue it and make sure it holds firm. Now we have our enclosure done, let's check out the colony. As you can see, their numbers have increased quite a bit with just one month's time. I have several nymphs that are approaching adulthood, which could potentially lead to an increased production, like the one climbing up my arm right now. However, they still get larger as they get close to maturity. Once mature, they grow wings, like the one on my hand. I believe this one to be a male, due to its lighter colored belly and segmented plate at the end of the abdomen. I now reach for what I believe is a female. Notice how much darker the underbelly of this brooch is, as well as having a singular plate at the end of the abdomen. The wings seem to always be more tattered, and their overall body appears to be more plump. Surprisingly, discoid roaches are quite calm as long as you are calm. One final look at the rear plate of the female. We can also see a delicate set of wings tucked up under, which is something I have never seen before. After a month, I have gained respect for this animal. They are absolutely fantastic break dancers. One last comparison side by side, so you can see the difference, females dark, males light, general rule of thumb. Now I begin to transfer my colony into the bin. I am doing this by hand because I had moss in their prior enclosure, and since I will not be adding it to this one, I wanted as little of that litter in this enclosure as I could. It also made me overcome my fear of handling them. I'll say it again, they are so calm and relaxed, I have gained respect for them. For their dry food, I make my own that is ground into a finer powder with added vitamins so roaches of all sizes can feed. I use a lid to keep it in and this will feed my colony for quite some time, alongside greens and other fresh veggies. I do the same thing with water jellies and keep rehydrating them every few days. Now that the colony has moved in, I have a question for all of you out there. What is this strange action the roach is doing? Let me know in the comments. I will give you a shout out. I personally think the fluttering of the wings has something to do with mating, but that is purely speculation on my part. I honestly do not know. The very last part is adding the egg crates. My discoid colony is small, so two will do for now. I do suggest adding more, as you can see, some of the larger roaches have already moved in. I have a heating pad placed directly under the section to create a nice warm spot for them. They prefer warmer temperatures, closing in on the high 80s. Give the enclosure a mist to help with humidity a few times a week, and that is about all there is to breeding these guys. A single female can produce upwards of 30 nymphs every month to a month and a half. And that's everything. If you have it in your insect loving heart, give me a like, click subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more videos like this about feeder insects. Once my colony grows large enough, I will get into a more in-depth guide that talks about optimizing your setup. For the last segment of this video, I'm going to be giving a fan shout out and show off some of their cool insects and reptiles. This is Amon's Roach Colony. He did not mention what species they are, I want to say they are Madagascar Hissing Cockroach. The reason I say this is due to the markings on the sides of their underbellies on the abdomen, which you can see more clearly in this photo. Their dark coloring, size, ability to climb glass, winglessness, and general shape seem to fit as well. Tell me if I got it right. This is just a guess. 
please be nice. Now on to Amon's leopard gecko. Isn't she a beaut? He didn't happen to tell me her name. However, if he comments, I will pin it. I'm going to take a guess at which morph his leopard gecko exhibits. I will probably be wrong, but I wanted to say more than just a few things for Amon. Make it a little fun. He has, after all, commented on every one of my videos. So I think his gecko is a bell albino, or some variant. I'm not great with leopard geckos. I do own four. Maybe in the future I will do a video sharing them with you guys. Thank you, Amon, for sharing your roach colony and leopard gecko with us today. If you would like to see your insects or reptiles in my next video, send an email with a few attached photos to thegizzards at gmail.com. Link in the description. If you send an insect, please provide what species it is. Or, if you would like for me to guess, don't. If you want your pet's name included, please provide that, along with their species and gender. And as always, from the gizzards and I, have a wonderful day.